welcome to um, to the board and to, to our members for our annual report and AGM for FY21. Uh, we'll go through some of the impact and achievements of the last financial year and uh, a little bit of um, planning in terms of what's um, in store for us, I guess, next year, coming into next year. Um, and a great opportunity for our members who are joining to ask questions, to get involved, um, use the, the brains of the board while they're, they're here in one place and available on, on what's happening um, from, a, from an industry body point of view. Um, so from a structure point of view today, I'm going to go through um, just a few slides on um, IB achievements, what's happening, what we've got through last year, a little bit what's going on next year. Then a few of the board members are going to pick up on some of the key um, initiatives and themes um, going into FY22. Um, and then it's over to you guys to ask any questions if you want, um, suggestions, etc. We've also done a, um, Jen from our team's done a fairly broad member survey. So um, speaking to, our, to all our members in terms of their priorities for the year, I'll do a bit of a summary on, on what people are wanting out of the IAB and, and industry representation for the year as well. So if that's all okay, I will kick off. Alrighty. Um, so these are our wonderful board members. Um, many of them are here. Apologies from um, Siggy from Yahoo and uh, Susie who will be joining us later, as well as Mark Bamford, who's our independent uh, director from Simpson Solicitors. Um, but just a reminder of our, our broad board representing media owners, um, platforms, tech, um, across and classified players across the industry. Hopefully most of you are familiar with the structure of the IAB, um, introduce you to the board and our councils and working groups. We've got about 200 people who now sit across those different, different working groups and, and councils. So a really broad mix of um, organisations, different skill types, different people feeding into the projects um, that we're doing and thoughts on where the industry should be going. Um, hopefully you all know most of the IAB team. Uh, we have had one recent new hire, so Sarah Walladen, who's joined as Director of Policy and Reg Affairs. Um, it's probably, hopefully, no surprise to all of you uh, why, we, why we need this function at this point in time, but we'll go through some of the priorities. But um, welcome to Sarah, and I'm sure if you haven't dealt with her already, you will, you will get to know her over the coming year. Um, Membership base for the IB continues to grow. So from our early days, way back, uh, way back when, when we were a few publishers to um, now over 150 member organisations across the, across the industry. So media owner, agency, ad tech, um, a few advertisers and research companies um, and everyone pretty much in between. So um, pretty much broad representation of the industry. Over the last year or so, a lot of the growth has been from um, particularly out of home, um, ad tech and research companies, um, as, as well as sort of new players that are entering the market as well. Um, and we're starting to see a lot more, I guess, overlay between uh, retail and media as well. So starting to see a few more players in that retail, retail media or retail data space um, get involved. So what have we got done in the previous financial year, which I know sounds, feels like a million years ago, um, but for FY21, in terms of webinars, you can see the breadth of, of content that we went through. Um, probably at least all of your organisations were, were on at least one of the webinars. Um, and as you can see from an attendance point of view, both live and post, um, really strong reach with 12,500 views of the, of the webinars over that, over that 12 months. So going from live events in FY19 to a bit of live and virtual in FY20, to pretty much all virtual in FY21. We did get one event in, um, and then hopefully this year, um, going into the new calendar year, um, we will be back, uh, back with a range of events to get our community cranking again. Um, in terms of revenue, the market, um, as you would all know, has had a very healthy, healthy rebound uh, post some of the slowdown. Now, our industry wasn't as impacted as others in terms of slowdown with COVID. Um, revenue, but 11.4 billion for the year across 
um, across the different uh, types of digital revenue. So continuing to invest um, quite heavily working with PwC to make sure we've got really robust market data there for everyone to enjoy. Um, major releases for FY21 um, and engagement in those, because I know everyone puts a lot of work into the releases that we put out. So just making sure that we're really aware of the impact that's having in market. Um, so still a heavy amount of resource downloads. There's 33,000 different reports downloaded in a year, slight drop from the previous year, but a big uptick in um, video consumption. So all those webinars, people going through the education space in a, in a sort of a more visual, visual contact. Um, social followers, similar to the previous year, but we have had a huge jump in that direct relationship with a broader group of people. So over 6,000 people receiving our weekly email newsletter, which has been um, a fantastic way of making sure the industry is up to date with, with what's going on with the IAB, but with our members, with the broader industry as well. Um, and hopefully some of you are IAB podcast subscribers. It is back. It's been back for a couple of months. Um, if you haven't listened to the last podcast, uh, which is focused on women in leadership uh, with Nina Vanek and um, Ilda Jamison, I think Ilda's there, um, I'd highly recommend that one. It's, it's feeding into our um, talent report, which we'll hear more about shortly. Um, in terms of PR and communication, we keep a fairly close track in terms of making sure that as well as that direct communication with um, the industry that we're getting um, healthy coverage across different trade publications locally and regionally, um, still a really healthy share of voice, so 32% share of um, all trade media articles um, uh, referenced in the IAB, um, slight, slightly below last year, but still a really good share considering the amount of um, trade bodies that are there at the moment. And that's sort of equated to over 800 different um, articles for the year. Quick thing on measurement. Um, I won't go into this too deeply. Hopefully some of you joined the IRIS uh, briefing that was on yesterday. Um, as you would know, we had a very big review of ratings over the last year. Uh, Matt's gonna talk to that uh, a little bit shortly. Um, media trends, we continue to ensure we publish consumer behavior, really top line, what's happening in the industry. Um, so that's in a few different reports, but also in our area of nickable slides, which is one of our most popular resources that's used from um, uni students right through the industry, a, a really easy way to have the same information in market. And then our Ad Effectiveness Council continue to do their work and looking at the actual impact of digital advertising. Um, the Beyond the Cookie paper uh, that the Ad Effectiveness Council has been the most downloaded resource that um, we've ever had. So that one continues to, to resonate really well in market, um, as well as the work that we do through the Measure Up um, conference and the more recent Measure Up awards. Um, technical standards. So um, we continue to work very closely with, with Tech Lab and, and JJ leading the charge here in terms of rollout of um, different technical standards, guidelines um, on, on a range of different areas. So particularly over the last year in that addressability space, identity, addressability, privacy, but also continued work in the transparency standards. Um, a lot of historic work's been done on the sell side transparency standards and, and now rolling out those buy, buy side transparency standards, as well as the more sort of um, technical measurement infrastructure um, so we've just had an update to the podcast measurement guidelines and OMS decades extending its reach as well. Um, talent and training is becoming a bigger topic. Um, Nicole talks this shortly, but in terms of what we've currently had in play for the last, last financial year, the mentorship program continues um, to do amazing things. So we've had, I think, about 180 mentees go through that program now. Um, great support across the industry, great feedback. Um, so a, a nice one of just trying to retain talent, give them support, particularly as we see a lot of people being promoted quite quickly in market. Um, FY21 saw us starting to return into the sort of more formal training space. So we do a lot in education, but more in the in the training side of things. So the launch of the Privacy, privacy Essentials training, which is um, a great program. If your teams haven't already done it, I would highly recommend 
um, um, getting them to undertake it because it will still be relevant for, for quite a while. We, we won't have any um, regulatory changes for a while. So that one is uh, will be fit for purpose for a while, as well as the work that we do with the MFA and AANA. And we've rolled out a, a proof of knowledge program for the Australian Digital Lab practices there, which is a, a great starting point for um, a lot of people, both buy and sell side in the industry. A couple of new initiatives uh, for the last year, Measure Up Awards. Hopefully you all saw um, the second round of awards being announced um, a couple of weeks ago with um, the, the Guardian and VMO uh, winning this year, winning the two prizes. And that, um, that awards program has been really well, well received across the industry. And our latest uh, working group, which is a, a gaming working group, uh, which has already um, rolled out quite a few, a few different initiatives. Um, going into this financial year, we've already been busy um, and it's why the IAB team are exhausted, I think, already. Uh, but these are the reports that have been released um, from July through to, um, through to November already. So some really solid pieces of, of work there that um, you all have access to and, and hopefully are useful for your teams and as importantly for your clients. Going into the rest of the financial year, um, a few really key areas uh, for the industry and really important ones. Um, the audience measurement currency rollout. So the beginning of the next year, a lot of work being done um, on that at the moment. Talent and training, big focus for us and I'm sure all of your organisations. Um, and we have two government inquiries um, underway. Um, the Ad Services Inquiry, which will impact anyone in the programmatic space, as well as the two papers coming out of the Privacy Act review which are uh, detailed and um, go in lots of different places. So uh, at both areas that we'll have to keep an eye on. Um, and Dan's gonna talk to that a little bit in a minute. So that's sort of a quick headline of what we've been up to. Um, and I'm gonna hand over to Nick to talk talent. Hi, uh, everyone. So Nicole Bentz, if there's anyone on who I haven't haven't met before, I just probably wanted to talk a little bit more around um, just talent and what's sort of been going on in that space. So as Gay sort of alluded to before with the, you know, the mentoring program, um, the huge amount of educational resource, the nickable slides, um, the podcast, uh, it's amazing, you know, as a team, what, what Gay and the team are at, you know, able to produce and put out there. But I think, you know, that's been a core pillar of developing talent um, for the IAB and really sort of, you know, whether it's through the mentorship program or any of the sort of events, um, obviously not as much over the last sort of 12 months, but a lot of sort of community events to really, you know, bring people in. Um, I think what was exciting for me at the Strat Day that we did at the beginning of the year is it was just such a hot topic across, you know, so many of the businesses for varying reasons. Um, and I think we really all sort of shared some similar challenges, but also saw that there was some really, you know, great opportunities for the IAB to potentially expand, um, you know, not only the number of mentors and those sorts of things, um, but potentially some more tangible solutions as to how we could really sort of help the industry. And so off the back of that, um, you know, a working group was sort of put together um, and the first inaugural report was put out. So, um, digital advertising and sort of ad tech report to really understand a number of different areas. I'm sure you guys have read it. Um, all of our, a lot of our tech teams very much came and waved it in my face around, um, you know, some of the stats that came out, but I think it really did give us um, a great market view and a great sort of understanding as to what was happening um, there. And it, and it did give us that sort of voice of market. And I think it was a great resource to then kind of understand what is the role of the IAB? Where can we play? How can we bring value to the members? and the broader industry. So um, there is a review at the moment to understand around what that sort of training program, you know, could look like. And I think, you know, hopefully between now and the end of the year, we will, you know, finesse and finalise a few more of those details and then roll out um, a training program probably sort of early next year, which, you know, personally, when I sort of think about um, what's out there at the moment and what that point of difference would be, but how we can you know, particularly across those more sort of tech roles, um, really give people something more tangible so that they can understand more about the tools and, you know, come into these jobs a little bit more, with a little bit more understanding, a little bit more knowledge and, and helping to sort of, you know, take the pressure um, from a training perspective off organisation. So 
thank you to everyone who's in that group. I'm not, but I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really exciting initiative and I think one that will give us a lot to sort of talk about and a lot of value to you guys next year. And be a mentor. If you're not, be a mentor. It's rewarding. Thanks, Nick. Perfect timing. We're, um, we're opening applications for mentees next week, so Tip will be very happy that you've done that call out. Um, perfect. Matt, your favourite topic, measurement. Yeah, thanks. Um, hi, everybody. Uh, if I haven't met you, my name is Matt Rowley, I'm CEO of Pedestrian Group, and I'm uh, Nine Entertainment's representative on, on the board. Um, so, yeah, this is obviously... I think you ask anybody what the IAB is about and fairly close to the top will be measurement. And with, and that's for a very good reason. In any market, having a currency that people can trust um, is really, really important for that market to be able to function. Um, obviously, we worked with uh, Nielsen uh, for the last 11 years um, to be the provider or the endorsed provider of that measurement. And... I think one of the, I guess, therefore, one of the things I was really proud of that we've done um, as a board and an organization over this past year is to have a look at that. Because obviously when you've worked with an organization on something as big as that, that's really fundamental to what you do. It's a, not a, a slight undertaking to talk about reviewing that and then potentially changing it. Um, so what we did was we put together, um, or we ran a review. Um, we got uh, Venture Insight, uh, uh, consultants to help us with that and I think that was a great appointment some people who had some really great um, specific knowledge um, in, the, in the area um, and they delivered a report in April um, that's sort of scoped out what we felt we needed in um, a measurement uh, currency going forward and I'll just take you through what sort of those uh, key criteria were um, high levels of credibility and transparency in the methodologies and data output more ways uh, for media or owners to differentiate their audiences um, to close the gap on cross-platform measurement, starting with CTV, um, interoperability with other um, data sets, uh, user-friendly int interfaces might sound simple, but it's really important um, to adhere to the highest levels of privacy compliance down to the future and to adapt and evolve with technology and consumer changes. So pretty big list. Um, and obviously we then put that out for RFP, um, ran that as a really good uh, tender process. Um, and then as you would be aware, we announced in late August that Ipsos were the winner um, of that. And then to, to round it out, um, I think Gay touched on this earlier on, uh, we're gonna have that currency um, operational, well, our plan is to have the currency operational in the second quarter um, of next year. So, you know, from go to woe, um, it's just been about, you know, a year to undertake all of that um, and to come out with what we all feel is like a really, uh, really good result. Um, and within that, um, we've announced that we'll be partnering with Oztam for that CTV data, which is one of those uh, recommendations. So big steps forward. Um, there's a lot of work. I just wanted to take this opportunity actually to thank and congratulate again, Gay and the team for running through that. Um, it's a lot to put on top of everything else right in the middle of the pandemic as well. Um, but I think it's really yielded a, a great and robust uh, result for the whole industry. And we're really, really looking forward to be working with that, uh, that new currency uh, early next year. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. It was a big project. And I think any other currency, if you say you're going to build something, you know, go from brief to, to live in a year would call you crazy. And let's see, maybe we are, but hopefully we're on track so far. Let's see how we go. Um, Dan. Uh, thanks, Gay. Uh, yeah, if I could just echo that, by the way, that was a pretty substantial project. So uh, thanks to you and the team for uh, all the efforts that, um, that went into that. Uh, I think everyone knows me, but just in case, Stan Stinson, I'm the Managing Director of The Guardian and obviously our representation uh, on the board. Um, so Gay's just asked me to give a bit of insight into what's coming up uh, on the regulatory front, um, which seems to have become my whole universe over the last uh, 18 months or so. Um, but there are, there are two significant regulatory initiatives that are, that are underway um, that I think are going to have pretty substantial, uh, pretty substantial impact on, on the digital marketing industry. So the first, uh, I think they've, they've both been touched on, but just to reiterate, the, the first being the HCC's uh, Digital Advertising Services Inquiry. So as I think everyone will realise, they, they released their final report a few weeks ago. Um, there are a number of recommendations there, but, but one of the key themes, if you like, of the report was calling for more transparency within um, you know, digital advertising broadly, and I guess re real-time bidding uh, specifically. 
Um, and one of the recommendations, in particular recommendation four, was basically calling on the industry to uh, effectively work together to uh, improve the transparency um, uh, that exists within, within the supply chain. Um, so I think it's pretty clear uh, to us at least, and hopefully to everyone else on, on this uh, meeting, that the IAB is probably the best placed organisation to, faci to facilitate that process. Um, I think we've got the Tech Lab standards, uh, privacy standards already. Um, I think if we were to build on those, uh, then hopefully we can go a long way to, to meeting uh, what the ACCC um, wants us to achieve as an industry before they come in and do it for us. So uh, it's a really important um, process, this one, and it's, it's, it's already kicking off. Um, we've got a meeting with the ACCC this afternoon, in fact, to, to start discussing this, but um, that's a really important uh, initiative and, and regulatory reform, which is coming. Uh, the second, uh, probably equally, if not more important, is the, um, the Attorney General's review of Australia's um, Privacy Act 1988, which I think the title says it all. It's, it's pretty outdated. Um, uh, and really, we need to catch up to uh, an adequacy level with GDPR in um, Europe or uh, California's Privacy Act. California is also just, uh, sorry, not California, um, uh, um, Canada, sorry, has also just implemented a privacy regime, which um, so we're, we're a long way back. Um, this uh, could have really significant implications for our industry. Now, I think it's, it's on the whole a good thing. Um, I think more privacy uh, coming into the way digital advertising operates um, is something which, uh, you know, at a high level, I think we all support. We just have to make sure that in achieving that, we don't um, kneecap our industry and, and we get the balance right between consumer privacy and still being able to have an effective uh, industry with, with targeted ad advertising capabilities. So it's a really critical uh, year for our industry coming up. Um, I would encourage everyone that's on this call and everyone in our industry, in fact, to really uh, lean into this and to work with the IAB on it. I'm sure Gay's gonna be keeping everyone updated as we go through the process, but um, yeah, it's a pretty critical year coming up. So uh, uh, everyone, should, uh, everyone should pay attention, I think. Thanks, Dan. Reese. Thanks, Gay. Thanks, Dan. Um, for those who don't know me, I'm Reese Williams from Google. I lead our large customer sales business and uh, act as Google's rep on the board. And Dan, just like Dan, yes, regulation and privacy has been a big part of our world as well uh, the last 12 months. Um, but I, I, Dan's covered that, so I won't, I won't get into that one. But firstly, I just want to say a huge thanks to Gay uh, for her strong leadership this year. I mean, it's been another year like no other. Um, hopefully we'll stop saying that soon. Um, huge thanks to Nicole for her leadership in chairing the board. And I think it's worth recognising the whole IAB team as well for their efforts this year. You know, for a small team, you heard from Gay before, uh, you know, there's a hell of a lot of output happening from that small team. So I think they do a great job. Um, I'd like to touch on community and I think it's one of the things that uh, the IAB you know does really really well um, is bringing people together from across different parts of the industry um, creating those personal connections and this year as Gay, Gay talked to it a little bit before but the IAB did a, a fantastic job in transitioning from you know uh, in-person events to virtual and to hybrid and to in-person and so on so we were able to keep the industry connected educated and inspired. Um, as we go into, into next year, um, you know, we're excited about, about the reopening that we're all going through right now. And you know, that's gonna have a great impact on the way that our, our community events work, both large and small events, whether that's the, the in-person council meetings or uh, large conference events like Measure Up or, or Ad Ops, sorry, and all the social and networking uh, that goes around that. Um, I think the, the calendar and the dates for 2022 are still just being finalised, but um, I'm sure you'll hear from us soon. Um, Gay tells me there's some plans for a couple of new initiatives to, to celebrate and to recognise the, uh, the great work and the innovative work that, that comes out of this industry on a daily basis. And it's great to hear we're going to do more of that. Um, and look, I think just just lastly, for me, I've worked in digital for, you know, for the vast majority of my career now, and I'm probably biased, but I really think that there has never been a better time to be in digital advertising right now. We're in, you know, the, the, the economy's in recovery mode, where we're opening up, advertisers are looking to make them the most of their, you know, newfound optimism amongst consumers and reach audiences. And Gay talked about the, the revenue going all up, up and to the right. So there's a lot of opportunity and there's a, it's a really exciting time to work in the digital advertising industry. So we're looking forward to a really strong 2022. 
Um, thanks. That's for me. And back to you, Gay. Beautiful. Thanks, Ruth. Um, and look, just a summary from me from some of the work that I'm taking Jen's credit here, but uh, the survey that uh, we did to all, for all of our members. Um, and just to give you a feeling of across our member base, everyone wants something slightly different. So, you know, the IB team are constantly trying to find ways to ensure that we give all different organisations a value. But I guess the, the top themes that came through in terms of what people are looking for from our team and from our, um, I guess, broader industry group. Um, so being a trusted advisor and information source, um, development of standards and education pieces, I guess around their specific industry, particularly vertical driven industries, whether it be gaming, digital and home, et cetera. Um, sort of an internal spotlight, the IAB helping with that training, profile, culture side of things. And then quite a lot of our members in terms of that outward profile piece, you know, making sure that their brands are seen, they're in good company, that they're getting opportunities in webinars, et cetera. So just to give you a feel of those sort of broad areas. And at the moment, I guess the, you know, that, piece around um, regulation that will grow as well just being again that trusted advisor making sure that people are, are up to date with what's going on there so a huge thank you to to all the members for I guess investing time energy um, to to be part of part of us you know we can only really um, make all these wonderful initiatives and, and carry out standards and the work on behalf of the industry if, if people are members and as you saw we're getting a, a nice broad group of people there so um, big thank you to all of you on the call and, and the team and the board. Um, so that's, I guess, the end of um, the updates from us. Um, over to anyone on the call if you had any questions or comments on anything that's been discussed or anything you think we're missing that we should be looking at. Thanks, Happy. Thank you. All right, if there's nothing from anyone else, we can um, we can wrap up for the year. Um, Tip will share a link and it's up on our website, the full annual report uh, for you to download, share with your teams, um, have a look at what we've done, what you could get more involved with next year as well from your organization's point of view. So, yeah. Thank you everyone. Easy peasy.